Hello, hello, hello. I hope you are fine, not very tired. Um, so I came from the country which, um, uh, which is often referred as the last dictatorship of Europe, uh, as the communism with a taste of cappuccino, and uh, as the Zimbabwe of Europe. Uh, you all remember the Zimbabwean presentation, but I will continue talking about the dictatorships, about the humor and its role in the dictatorship. So basically, uh, I was six when Alexander Lukashenko became uh, the president and later dictator, so nobody believed to know it will take he will stay for so long. And uh, since then, um, Lukashenko became like um, like the rain. I never saw him in person, so I always hear about him because he's like speaking at all TV stations, all TV channels, all the posters everywhere. So he's like a rain, and he's like the Lenin monuments. So everyone got used to them. Everyone doesn't see them because they're everywhere. They're just a part of the daily routine life, and um, it's okay until Lukashenko became a dictator. So he actually consolidated his regime. He created strong police uh, and internal army, and uh, he began destroying Belarus democracy, uh, similar to other uh, countries of the uh, post-Soviet Union. So on this picture on the left, that's my family photo with my father. Um, so my father had a birthday one month ago, and I was looking for the photo together with him, and the only one I found it was this one, and I wrote, happy birthday, Dad. And it was very, uh, very funny. So, but but uh, reality is not so funny. Reality is no haha. Reality is brutal. And uh, of course, we disagree with this, because we don't want to be other dictatorship, we want to be European, prosperous, democratic country, so I became an activist. But in Belarus, you cannot protest. Because when you go to the streets, you're arrested, you're jailed, and all of my colleagues, my fellow Belarusians, they have been at least once in jail and prison. So what we did, we began making performances. And I used to be an activist before uh, my latest imprisonment. And we organized uh, flash mobs, like renting water bikes, organizing, like wearing, you know, um, different kind of uh, costumes and pretending we are, uh, we love dictatorship, we love Lukashenko, and uh, wearing golden costumes, uh, so different stuff that helped us uh, to show that dictatorship is not forever, that we are different, that we disagree, and government and the system was not able to stop us because uh, they know how to arrest political leaders, but they don't know what to do with artists and creative performances and organizers. Uh, but social media changed everything. Basically, uh, they gave us opportunity, they gave us a space which is not controlled by the government. They gave us um, platforms, they gave us tools, and we used these tools in order to desacralize Lukashenko's regime, to show that this regime is not perfect. And first of all, we started with this mass culture. So this, these pictures you will see, and I will be showing today, these memes are product of the folklore of the people. So basically nobody knows who created this. But this movement became huge in 2005, 2010, and thousands of pieces of memes, pictures, and products of mass culture was like this. So first of all, it helped to empower creativity and grassroots initiative, grassroots artisticism in the society. So it's not only about like Futurama, it's also about Lord of the Rings, it's also about the Star Wars. Basically, we reacted to all the products of world mass culture. And people people share it, people like it, you know, because it helps to, to look at this brutal dictatorship from new perspective, you know. You see this KGB building, you're scared, later you see Lord of the Rings, you know, this, uh, this uh, uh, guy similar to Lukashenko on the left, and oh, it's not so scared anymore. <laughs> Of course, you know, we, we um, uh, try to promote all the products, the movies, the cartoons that can be somehow related to our dictatorship, so people can compare to uh, their own life, their own reality, with this mass culture reality. And the movie Dictator was the, the absolute hit in Belarus. Because the dictator, in the, in the movie Dictator, he watched, is a super copy of Lukashenko. So we also use social networks and um, memes, cartoons as the storyteller. How you can explain to people that the person who is being ruling your country for 25 years is not normal? You just compare, you just compare this to other countries. 
And this is on the left, the last picture of the Ukrainian presidents. That's neighboring country to Belarus. And so people look at this picture and they compare it to their life. You know? So we see five presidents of Ukraine and five presidents of Belarus. And people go, oh, look, that's not normal, I think, you know. Or like this one. Or like, or like this one. <laughs> so all the, all the leaders of Westeros for Game of Thrones uh, um, TV show, and all the leaders of Belarus during the Game of Thrones uh, TV show on HBO. So Lukashenko realized that every action, every statement, every mistake will become a meme. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why social networks, memes, jokes, help us to build government accountability. Of course, government was trying to limit somehow to arrest producers of these memes. Some of them were forced to leave the country and to work from Tallinn, from Warsaw, from Berlin. But still, the links were created more and more and more. Uh, we try to use every news and every statement <laughs> which appeared in the news in order to mock him. So one day, when Bitcoin was like seventeen thousand dollars per one, uh, Lukashenko said, "Oh, guys, we have to make bitcoins." <laughs> and this is the same Lukashenko who was telling for twenty-five years now that IT, that internet, the digital space is a uh, trash bin, you know, and we have to avoid it. So we made the jokes about bitcoins, and also about the policeman, which is like mining bitcoins, that's a police car, you know, and he's going to hide. And also Lukashenko in this, um, uh, how do you say, treasure of Belarus, you know, with the video, um, uh, with video, video equipment, you know, to, to, to produce bitcoins. So um, we also know um, the, the police force, the brutality, the police brutality, because this is something that everyone in Belarus faced at least once. Sometimes people are arrested without a reason, sometimes without a reason. You know, I was like four times jailed and every time for different reasons, you know, from like seeing on public to the hooliganism and preparing revolution. So you never know what will be your your accusation. But this is, you know, the Beatles going to the police uh, Who is that? It's a car. Oh, that's a very interesting thing. So one, and Lukashenko always, you know, when he doesn't read from the paper, he makes very, very funny statements. And one day, when he was speaking about to his officials and to the nation, he was trying to explain how you should live, how people must behave. And he made a statement, but perhaps he meant something different, but he, this is what he said. Приватизации и прочее, все это понятно. Мы уже это освоили. Но все и наша жизнь в простом. Надо развиваться и работать. So basically, he wanted to say we have to develop and work. But perhaps he made a mistake and it sounded like we should get undressed and work. So there was a campaign on social networks and people took it literally. So more than 12,000 posts in 48 hours, people went to their jobs without clothes, you know, just naked and made the pictures. All the other radio presenters, factory workers, drivers of trolley bus, and making pictures and posted, you know. And, um, uh, and nobody can stop it, you know, because this is like a viral campaign which is not controlled by any, anyone. And this mistake, you know, also it, it helped to decentralize his, his regime. So basically, after 25 years, himself, he himself became a meme. And um, <laughs> if you have one meme, you can always combine this meme with other memes. So there is a meme about Belarus, that Belarus eats uh, eat, eat a lot of potatoes, you know, yes? Yeah. Sometimes we even refer to the bourgeoisie, like potato people, and Lukashenko is referred personally as the potato man. So Belarusians made millions of jokes comparing Lukashenko to potato. So the main joke that, you know, potato is at least useful somehow. But about these potatoes, uh, oh, give me, yeah. So about potatoes, so Lukashenko is always, you know, when preparing to side to the, uh, this, you know, harvesting season, he's showing himself working on harvesting potatoes. Demonstrating, you know, how, how important it is to, you know, to, to, to give the personal example. And you can see the picture on the right, you know, he's on the moon, 
Hello, Harvest and Potatoes. Uh, on the left, he and his uh, son and all this diplomatic apparatus working with him on potatoes. Lukashenko driving the car, five packs of potatoes in the back. <laughs> Lukashenko has this mafiosi with potato. Lukashenko is the potato tsar. Lukashenko is the hero of cartoons. Lukashenko is the Donald Duck, you know, uh, jumping into potatoes. So basically, you know, this potato meme became equal to Lukashenko. When you speak now about potatoes in Belarus, basically, you also can always, the next joke will be about Lukashenko loving potatoes. Also, his son sometimes will become the victim of the jokes and memes. And it's impossible to stop. Of course, Lukashenko doesn't like it, you know, his son is most the same as him. But you see Kolya Lukashenko, who is brought by Lukashenko everywhere, to all the international events, to North Korea, to Germany. And this joke, you know, that remember Kolya Lukashenko, this is him now, Phil Ovia. On the right, it's, um, it's Mary, you know, so you don't recognize. But all these jokes about Kolya are Kola very funny. And there is a Twitter account which is pretending to be Kola, son of Lukashenko, the next the president of Belarus, Lukashenko. Uh, and where he's speaking, he's like describing the life of the house of Lukashenko. So, a few jokes, you know, from there. Oh, we are, write, we are writing Christmas letters with our wishes. I'm writing to Santa Claus. My dad is writing to Putin. <laughs> Belarusians are definitely not Lannisters, because Lannisters always pay their debts. We play pantomimes. Dad was not able to show the word democracy. So the last episode of Game of Thrones came out in Belarus, however, the Game of Thrones ended in 94. So many, many of these jokes, every event, every uh, discussion, every, every, every trending topic in use, it is commented by Kolya Lukashenko, and um, hundreds of thousands of people are Belarus and following him, and actually getting used. But police doesn't like it at all. So unfortunately, many of these uh, constant humor creators are uh, persecuted, and many of them are living, uh, living in the country. And uh, first, they, what, what they usually say, it's not funny. And uh, all our jokes, what, what is funny for us, not funny for them. And but what we did, we started to Photoshop things. So that was the protest, you know, the guy was arrested for this. And uh, for almost 48 hours, you know, he spent in, in police. He just Photoshopped himself on the background. And he was arrested for organizing the mass protest. You know, and he was accused. <laughs> but finally, he was released, you know, because he proved that that's a Photoshop picture. So why memes important? Because memes help us to mobilize people for social protests, for activities, for doing something in the social political sphere. They inspire discussion on the important trending topics, and they destroy fears. And the memes need the context. So they need the context of the today, of this week, of the specific territory, specific society, specific country we are discussing. So when you want to make your memes effective, first of all, you have to identify these memes for your country. We actually identified them somehow, and what you have to do when you create content, when you create humor, inspire, you have to combine them. You have to put these memes on the current events and make them trendy, make them viral. Well. Thank you. Very fast one. Does Lukashenko have a team that creates uh, memes? so that they can cut the narrative, those memes, like Putin does? No, they're very serious. They do not make jokes. So I don't think, I don't think, you know, dictatorship, authoritarian uh, country can create uh, really efficient memes. Memes is a power, it's, um, it's a weapon of democracy, of democratic movement, not dictatorships. Dictatorships are very bad at creating, you know, these things which help them to protect you know, their values and ideas. The Russian, um, Russian propagandists for Russian channels on Telegram, on Facebook, they are trying to create like anti-democratic, anti-Western memes and jokes. So they are more or less good in this, but Lukashenko himself is he failed. From there? Yeah. That's me. Uh, thanks for your presentation. I really liked that. Um, uh, my question is the following: So it looks like you're using, or the, the Belarusians who are against Lukashenko will be always against Lukashenko, using like the Hollywood new movies or relative new movies. It means like that your audience is mostly like young people or 30 plus people, 30 plus uh, old year, uh, years old. But did you try, or probably the pillars try to reach the other audience, which are like post Soviet with post Soviet consciousness, but probably by using Soviet man, uh, Soviet movies or Soviet songs, just like we did in 2014, 2016 in Ukraine, we just uh, used the Soviet music and, and put the Ukrainian patriotic words, for instance. Words that he tries so to do that. Thanks. Oh, I think we really, really lack it, and we actually lack the content for 
for older generation, for seniors, for post-Soviet generation, which is still very nostalgic about Soviet past, and they're ready to forgive you know, all the Stalin's repressions and the horrors of communism just in order to have the ice cream for 11 kopeyek. So, um, unfortunately, we failed to, to message them and to make this message efficient. Yeah, we, exp you know, some people are experimenting you know, with this uh, Soviet movies, you know, uh, that are uh, recognized by better society. And also, we failed to reach very young people, young people who are using like TikTok and Snapchat, because we, we never, you know, created content for them. And I think all the of independent media, and not so, which is not controlled by the regime, they don't know how to how to speak to them. So that's that's a task, you know. Uh, that's a difficult task, that's a big challenge. Yeah. Brilliant presentation, really. Um, with youth memes, you use material, very often copyrighted, right? And you have to do this to be, to criticize something in society. How is things like the European Copyright Directive and such actions actually affecting your work? Do you have any kinds of fears, or is, it, is there something happening already? Oh, I, I know the memes, the GIFs, all this like folklore content, especially in post-Soviet countries, unfortunately, you know, doesn't follow any like copyright issues. And I think you know, you know all, even all these you know, copyright owners, they already gave up in fighting for you know for copyright protection in these countries. Uh, but uh, it's also the new product. If you use the, um, even the copyrighted video or picture or even poster of V4 Vendetta, but if you change the elements and you create the so-called new product, you know, it is not, uh, it is not protected you know, by the original one. Because if you can prove it's a new original product, which is based on some like, basic idea or like, uh, or it has like public importance, this is, um, or it could be used by courtesy, or it could be like a fair use. So this is, um, but, but that's a tricky question. Great. Thank you very much, Prana. Thank you.